and welcome to tonight's Learn with the Expert. We are so excited for everyone to join us. As we are waiting for our virtual room to fill up, we would love to have you introduce yourself in the chat. So in the chat, share where you're from, what your role is, and your grade level. Um, on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a little chat icon if your chat isn't already open. So just tap on that, and that will open up the chat for you. And go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat. So we are sharing where we're from, your role. Hi, Beth. Welcome, EdTech Coordinator, Massachusetts. Hey, Melissa. <laughs> Hi, Sophia. Hello, Angela. Marietta, third grade, Georgia. Hi, Denise. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Isabella from Miami, kindergarten teacher. I'm a former kindergarten teacher. Hello, hello. My tribe is in the room. Oh, we have Sophia all the way from Hong Kong. Well, welcome, everybody. Did you all know that Digital Citizenship Week is starting October 17th? That's actually next Monday. I'm excited because today you will meet an expert from Seesaw's very own curriculum team. Julia Moskowitz will share with us research strategies and ready to go resources that support you in creating digital leaders in your classroom. So before we begin, I do have a few housekeeping items that I want to review with you. If you have any questions during today's sessions that you want Julia to answer, just please click on the Q&A tab and put all your questions there. This just ensures that we don't miss any of your vital questions. If there are indeed questions that go unanswered, we will reach out to you directly and answer them after the webinar. All other chats, ideas, reactions, thoughts can be put in the chat tab so that everybody that's on this webinar with us tonight can view them. Just make sure that your chat and your Q&A tabs are open. If they're not, all you have to do is click on the little chat icon in the lower right corner of your screen, and then that'll open up both the chat and the Q&A, and you'll have the option to toggle between those. And you'll also notice that there is a handout tab as well, and that handout tab will include key takeaways from today's session. Uh, this session is also being recorded, so you will receive a link to the recording as well as the handout from the webinar um, in about 24 to 48 hours after the session is complete. So you all have been sharing in the chat who you are. You're probably wondering who you have on the line with you. I am Mia. Hello, everybody. I am the training and professional development specialist here at Seesaw. So what I do is I deliver trainings and webinars um, to educators and administrators um, and really support them in innovatively implementing Seesaw in their schools and districts and classrooms. I am based in Chicago, Chi-Town, um, born and raised on the South Side. Um, I am a former kindergarten teacher. I see another kindergarten teacher. Hi, Lauren, in the chat. I taught kindergarten for 10 years in the Chicago public school system. And I also coached teachers around implementing Seesaw in their classrooms and technology overall in their classrooms as well. So I am happy to be here with you today. Now let's meet our expert. So we have Julia Moskowitz with us today, and she is a, a curriculum manager, project manager here at Seesaw. We're happy to have her with us. Previously, Julia was a bilingual classroom teacher and K-5 through science and integrated technology instructional specialist in Denver Public Schools, where she focused on culturally responsive education, computer science, and digital citizenship. She did it all. Her passion as an educator lies in cultivating ways to really empower the next generation of digital leaders to use technology in a positive way. Welcome, Julia. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's great to be here. And we are so happy to have you. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. 
The reality of our world is that technology is everywhere. It's inevitable that students will use technology in the classroom, at home, and the rest of their lives. Technology is critical for most parts of our lives as well, whether we like it or not. So to begin, I would love to hear how you use technology in your classroom. Go ahead and drop your responses in the chat. How do you use technology in the classroom? What technology do you use in your classroom? So I see whiteboards, yes. QR codes for scaffolds and instructions. Thank you, Ashley. Google Classroom. Jessica said that they are one-on-one -on -one iPads and use them a lot. They, I think Dana said she uses technology to collaborate for centers, second graders using iPads. Thank you, Maria. Morning check-in on Seesaw Research. Yes, based on all these responses that are coming in, it seems like you use technology quite a bit in your classroom. So today, we'll dig into what students need to know in order to safely and appropriately use technology in the classroom and in their everyday lives. We are all teaching students who are born who were born into a world run by technology. Um, how many times have you had the experience where you're teaching a student how to use a certain technology? Maybe it's a new app, maybe it's a new digital tool, and you're trying to show them and they come back the next day and they're showing you all of the cool things that they can do with this new piece of technology. That's because they are digital natives. They were born into this. Knowing how to use technology is really a lifelong skill. Like reading and long division, those digital skills do need to be explicitly taught, even to digital natives. That might be surprising to hear. Even though students know their way around an iPad now, technology does change all the time. And students need to be explicitly taught skills in order to navigate and be leaders in our ever-evolving digital world. So how do we make sure that students are learning what they need? Um, that's why we're here today. So we are going to learn from our expert. Julia will be sharing what digital leadership is and how it's different than digital citizenship. She'll also share practical strategies and ready-to-go resources that you can use to integrate digital leadership into your classroom for Digital we a Citizenship Week, which is next week and beyond. So without further ado, I am happy to pass it over to Julia. Go ahead, Thanks, Julia, Mia. and take it away. It's so great to be here. Thank you, Mia. And I really want to start with the why. Why is digital leadership really essential in every single classroom? So I want you to think about at the beginning of this session, you all shared tons of technology that you use in your classroom, iPads, whiteboards, etc. And for many teachers, a big priority is teaching students how to engage safely and responsibly in the classroom, but the digital space is part of your classroom. It's an extension of that. So it's just as important to teach students the skills to engage safely and responsibly on a device as it is in person. And the skills needed to be leaders, just like showing kindness, thinking critically, are really important, whether you're inside the classroom or you're online. And so typically, when we think about the skills that students really need for technology, we think of digital citizenship. And often we think of digital citizenship as using devices and the internet safely and responsibly. But at Seesaw, we really think that it is more than that. Digital leadership is not just about following a set of rules. 
It's really thinking critically about how your actions are impacting you, those around you, and also your device. So it's not just passive consumption, but it's really active creation. And students are not only learning what it means to engage appropriately on the internet, but they're also learning the why and the how that they can use for positive change in the community and in the world. So we say that digital leadership is really building upon digital citizenship. It's equipping students to make informed decisions in digital spaces while they're learning, communicating, and they're leading. And everyone can cultivate these leadership skills. So as educators, we're really preparing students to be digital leaders. I would love to hear from um, our audience members in the chat, type what your students would say citizenship means. Would they know what it is? And be honest, do your students understand what a good what it is to be a citizen? Go ahead and share your responses in the chat. What would your students say uh, citizenship means? How would they define citizenship? Saying nice things to each other. Nikki says belonging to something. Maria said active creation. Okay. Let's see. Sarah said they would probably say something about being a part of a community. Yes, and Daniel agrees, being a member of a community and following the rules. Sherry said, taking care of your school, your teacher, your peers, and most importantly, yourselves. Okay, so now that you have shared what your students think uh, citizenship is, what would you say your students or how would your students define leadership? How would they respond? What would they say uh, leadership is? So Jen shared being kind online, no plagiarism, no sharing sensitive data, being in charge. Thank you, Denise. Being in control, the boss seeing a common theme here, being in charge, running the show. <laughs> All right, thank you for sharing. So for students, citizenship can be a pretty abstract concept and it's hard to understand. It's really difficult to unpack the idea of citizenship, especially with little kindergartners. And it can carry a lot of feelings for many students. So leadership is more concrete and while we can try to explain what a citizen is, we can really teach every student how to be a leader. And in doing so, students can really take ownership of their place in the digital world to not just belong, but to lead. So let's dive in to how we can build digital leaders into our classrooms. There's a ton of resources out there to teach digital citizenship, but research is showing that not all of these resources work all the time. They often fall short. And many teachers feel like they lack the training, the strategies, the support, the time to effectively implement digital citizenship and really help students make these smart, safe, ethical decisions. And so that's why we take a different approach. We want to support teachers to better prepare students, not just to be digital citizens, to belong, but to be digital leaders, to lead. So there's a ton out there. And one thing we need to keep in the front of our minds is that we can't expect students to just get it, to know how to navigate every situation and not make any mistakes just because they've grown up with technology. If we really want students to have the tools to actively and positively contribute to the digital space, if we really want to empower our students to think critically and navigate these tricky situations that are going to arise, 
we need to incorporate digital leadership practice into our everyday instruction. But don't stress because we have what it needs, what you need to make it happen. So at Seesaw, we have these ready to go lessons that make digital leadership instruction really simple and accessible for teachers. Digital Leadership with Bean is an interactive hands-on collection that's teaching students the skills to be these responsible digital leaders. Students jump into Bean's life, they explore real world choices, they're practicing being safe, balancing screen time, being kind, and students are also using their prior knowledge and their diverse experiences to apply these digital leadership skills in their own lives. So let's take a look. All right, so now we are going to have a little bit of fun and jump into Seesaw and explore a first grade lesson from the collection Julia just mentioned, Digital um, Leadership with Bean. Um, and we are going to explore a lesson titled, Bean is a Digital Leader. And um, let me go ahead and share my screen with you all. There we go. So here I am inside of that lesson. Dean is, Bean is a digital leader. And we're going to take a closer look at what you see here in all of the different components. So um, you'll notice that our, there are several different components of the lesson. So all of these lessons um, begin with an introduction. And the introduction is intended to be presented whole class. In this introduction, Bean goes through and shares what it means to be a leader and how to make those responsible decisions. So as a class, you will have the opportunity to decide what a good leader would do and have conversations as a whole class. You'll notice here that there is a present to class button, and this will allow you to present that lesson to your students and go through the lesson and engage um, in that conversation throughout. And you can see with the whole class lesson, you are going to be um, side by side with your students modeling um, not only how to make these decisions um, that will turn, eventually turn them into good digital leaders, but also you'll notice that you will be modeling for your students how to use these interactive CESA, multimodal Seesaw tools. So you notice that throughout the lesson, they are using the drawing tool and the microphone tool and the move tool. Um, all throughout the lesson here. So I'm just not actually going to go back to the main lesson page. So you'll notice that in, a, in addition to the introduction, um, there is also a practice section and, section, and that comes right um, after the introduction. And when you assign this to the students to complete, you can assign this to the students to complete on their own there. So um, I am just going to go ahead and assign that. And I'm just going to jump in so you can kind of see what it looks like um, from the student end. If I go ahead and tap add response, that is going to take me right inside of that lesson. This is what students see. You can see um, that the lesson opens up with all those multimodal tools that they'll use um, to um, engage um, in real world choices and decide um, how to um, be a responsible leader and what choices a responsible leader will make. So let's just take a look at a few of the pages within this lesson. So here, students learn that being a good digital le uh, leader means really caring for themselves. So here, students are going to look at three images, and you'll notice that they are going to use that drawing tool to identify ways to care for themselves. Next, students have to make decisions on what a digital leader would do in order to care for others. Again, they're using um, the drawing tools to circle the ways to care for others. On the following page, students choose how a good digital leader cares for their devices. So after doing that, after practicing making those decisions about being a digital good digital leader, then students are faced with um, some additional challenges. 
So let's just take a look at this slide here. It says, I learned to care for myself, others, and my device. My grown-up says I only have a little bit longer on the computer. Then I need to share my device with a sibling. My little sibling wants to use my computer, but I want to keep playing. What should I do? Circle your choice with the pen. So students then choose either to keep playing or to share their device. So let's take a look. If I decided that I wanna keep playing because it's so fun and I click on that option, it says try again. So it's going to take them back to that previous page and then they're going to make that second choice and it's going to say, let's see if we can play a little Yippee! bit. Yippee, I was a good digital leader. I followed the rules my grown-ups set for device time, and I was kind to my little sibling and let them play because I already had a turn. I was a good digital leader because I cared for myself, others, and my device. Always remember, be a leader on your device. Be kind, responsible, and nice. All right. So after your students actually have um, an opportunity to practice, then they engage in a connect activity. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and jump out of this. And I am going to go back into that lesson. And I wanna um, take a closer look at that connect activity. So here's that lesson here. There are all the components. So we talked about that introduction. We talked about the practice. And here is that connect activity. And the connect activity provides students with an opportunity to work either with a partner or a family member in order to deepen and extend uh, the learning. So in this activity, um, students work with a family member or a partner to uh, draw and label. Let's just look through here draw and the label what it looks and sounds like to be a digital leader. So you can see there, there's some review. The digital leader cares for themselves. They're going through. And at the very end, let's see there, there's another video and they're talking about what it means to be a good digital leader. So that is that connect activity that I, there we go. Sorry, I think I clicked on the wrong one. That was the other part. So let me make sure I'm showing that one. Here is the connect activity. That was actually the practice one that we just showed. So this says with a partner or family member, draw and label what it looks and sounds like to be a responsible digital leader. And they're using those drawing tools. And then they actually even get to erase um, to get their digital leadership badge there. There we go. Sorry about that. So in addition to a connect activity, every um, lesson has a show what you know, which is the final part. So I'm just going to preview that there. Um, and this final piece allows teachers to really assess and find out what students have learned throughout that lesson. Students get the opportunity to reflect on the choices that they made throughout the lesson and teachers get um, an assessment and insight into student understanding. And also every lesson has a lesson plan that will help you know how you can use the lesson in your classroom. So you'll notice here that right underneath the title and the standards of the lesson, it'll say jump to the lesson plan. I'm just going to tap that and it is going to take me to that lesson plan. And the lesson plan contains those lesson objectives, I will statements, um, the aligned learning standards, any additional resources that are needed for the lesson um, and, uh, any um, instructional format recommendations, you can see that this lesson here is recommended uh, to be presented in multiple uh, formats. So it can be flexibly incorporated into um, any of your existing classroom routines. And then finally, there is a section on any teacher tips for teaching the lesson and a how-to, which breaks down exactly how to teach the lesson. So these lessons allow students to learn about being a digital leader while creating and thinking critically, like Julia was saying, and practicing in a safe environment, practicing making and reflecting on choices um, in that safe environment. Thank you so much, Mia, for sharing with us. 
So yeah. teaching students these skills is a really important first step, but students also really need authentic opportunities to practice in everyday life because it isn't just learning about how to use devices. Digital leadership is really about the how, the when, and the why that we're interacting with technology, and that takes a lot of practice. So we can reinforce digital leadership skills every single time students are on their devices, our day-to-day -day routines in the classroom. And so let's take a look at some ways that students can practice critical thinking, kindness, care for themselves and others throughout the school day. So Bean makes it really easy for kids to remember, care for yourself, for others, and your device. And there's a few simple ways that you and your students can practice digital leadership throughout the school day. The first thing is practicing caring for your device. Think about co-creating routines and expectations with your students. Get them thinking about how they should handle their devices, how they can share with one another, and any other classroom expectations that you want to put into place. And we also have um, a device agreement that you can use uh, in our lessons. You can also practice caring for others. So teaching positive communication skills, like how to give kind feedback, is a really great place to start. And this is giving students authentic opportunities to give feedback in person and online. But Seesaw Comments are a really safe opportunity to practice that. So you as the teacher, you approve all the comments in Seesaw before they're posted. So even if a student makes a mistake, it just becomes a private important learning moment without anyone else's feelings getting hurt. And the last way that you can really authentically practice these digital leadership skills, although there's a ton more, is that thinking about how students can care for themselves when they're using technology. And you can really model that as a teacher by balancing your approach to time in the classroom. Are you planning hands-on activities and digital learning throughout the day? Also helping students to remember checking in with their bodies to determine if they need a break on their device. That's just a few ways to integrate caring for yourself and all of these other key digital leadership skills into the classroom. But we really want to make it a safe place to make mistakes because we know that everyone makes mistakes and kids make a lot of mistakes like they should. So when using technology in school, students aren't always exposed to real world challenges. That's why we have district filters and blockers. So this is protecting kids in schools. But it's also making it even more important to give kids the opportunities to practice these skills, make mistakes, and then learn from them. And that way, when they get on the internet outside of school, they have these skills that they can navigate those challenges that we know are going to arise. We think digital leadership shouldn't stop when students leave the classroom. Students are constantly watching their teachers and other adults in their lives to learn. And this is true for learning how to use technology too. So modeling safe and appropriate use of technology is really key. But as adults, do we even know how to be digital leaders? Many of us weren't exposed to technology at a young age. And even if we were, technology was so new that schools didn't have the type of digital leadership curriculum that we offer today. So supporting students and their families to learn these skills is really helping students develop positive habits that they'll carry even into adulthood. So we created this free family resource for students in English and Spanish to engage families in learning about digital leadership along with their child. And it's included in your handout that we're going to share shortly with you all today. And we can also remember that every digital leadership lesson includes a connect activity that students can complete at home. And Mia shared this with us. So they can do that with their family members. So you might have students teach their family members the lesson they learned in class, 
and then they get to go home and complete the connect activity. And some examples that we have in our lessons are identifying grownups at home that they can ask for permission before using the internet, teaching others how to be an upstander, practicing responding to hurtful words, creating a digital identity poster, and tons more. But those all allow students to have powerful opportunities to connect with their family members and integrate what they're learning about digital leadership. And so family members are also learning these important lessons, but students get to internalize the digital leadership skills outside of the context of the classroom in their everyday lives. Thanks, Julie. So our goal is really to empower our students to by equipping them um, with um, the tools that they need to be leaders, both inside and outside of school, um, by providing them with opportunities to learn, um, to take risks, to be comfortable with making mistakes, and to take care of themselves and others. That way, when students aren't in the safety of school, they're empowered with the skills that they need in our digital world. So we do have for you um, a um, for digital citizenship next week. We want to make sure that you have everything that you need in order to start integrating leadership into your classroom. So we do have free digital leadership with being lessons that we will be sharing with you to use on Seesaw. Also, as Julia mentioned, we have our family resource and we have an exclusive video for students that's really going to get them excited about being digital leaders. So um, I am going to play that video for you right now. <laughs> What are, what are you, you doing? doing? I'm, I'm having, having fun learning on my device. device. My, my teacher, teacher asked, asked me to practice being a digital leader. A digital what? A digital leader. Oh. That means showing you care for yourself, others, and your device. <gasps> I want to be a digital leader, Bean. Anyone can be a digital leader, including you, Rainbow Bear. I'll show you how. <laughs> yeah. The internet is a big but cool place. It helps us connect with people in our neighborhood and all around the world. Mm -hmm. And just like in our neighborhood, we need to be responsible leaders on our devices, too. That sounds cool. Right now, I'm on my favorite app, Seesaw. Ooh, Seesaw. Oh, uh, that reminds me. We always need to have permission from a grown-up to use our device. Ooh, I'll go ask, I'll go ask. Oh, uh, don't worry. My grown-up already said Seesaw is safe to use. Ooh, great. Let's comment on our friend's post. Yeah. We need to make sure we use kind words and show care for others. Ooh, ooh, tell them their report is so interesting. Okay. Yippee. Oh, yeah. Ooh. My body is telling me I've been on the computer for a while. Why don't we go play outside? Woohoo! I'm going to teach everybody how to be a digital leader. Remember, be a leader on your device. Be safe, responsible, and nice. All right. So I just want to thank everybody for joining us. And thank you, Julia, for sharing your expertise on how we can create digital leaders in the classroom. Before we go, we would love to take some time to answer some of the questions that you have entered into the Q&A. So if you haven't um, put your question in the Q&A yet and you do have a question that you would like Julia to answer, go ahead and pop them in. Let's see what questions we have. All right, Julia, would you complete these lessons over one day or several days? Nancy wants to know. That's a really great question. So I think you as the teacher can really think about with your students what makes sense. If you're noticing that you need more time to complete one lesson, break it up. Um, that's why the container is really great because it's broken into chunks for students. So if you get to the practice section day two, and you only get through the introduction, that's totally fine. Um, but I do recommend having at least uh, one to two lessons a week for students to really authentically get that practice to be digital leaders. 
Thank you. Let's see what other questions we have. It looks like Bean is geared towards K through three. Is there anything geared towards fifth grade? I hear you all. I saw that in the chat. So our resources for Bean, Digital Leadership with Bean, are K3, but we have an awesome 4-5 collection coming. So stay tuned. I promise, I promise that we will have those lessons out soon. Awesome. Be on the lookout. All right, let's see if we have any other questions. Uh, there's a question in the chat that didn't get dropped in the Q&A. Are there any adaptations for special education? Great question. So I would say that all of these um, lessons in Seesaw are really supposed to be for every single student. Um, and so they're adaptable to your students' needs. If you notice that you really want to change something and make it more meaningful for your students, no matter their, their background, where they're at, um, you can edit the lessons yourself. So that's the great thing. As soon as you save the lesson and make a copy, you get to edit it and accommodate your students' needs. Yes. And the multimodal tools in Seesaw allow you and your students to choose how to respond in ways that best support uh, their needs. Thank you. All right. So I believe that was all the questions. Oh, we may have another one. All right. Let's see. This should be done before the year starts. But in NZ, we are near the end. Will this still work? It's never too late to talk about digital leadership. So even um, wherever you are in the school year, whenever you can get to that, these foundational digital leadership skills are really important. So I would say there's no deadline. It's whatever works for you and your schedule. Great. So incorporating them anytime. I see a question too about... Um, parents. So in the getting resources that we can supply for parents. And so in all of the lessons, there's a family engagement resource, um, like we showed you that helps uh, parents understand and caregivers understand what digital leadership is, how they can support their child. And then individual lessons have um, individualized um, resources and handouts for the parents. So for example, our media balance um, agreement is really great for families to recognize what they need to do at home to balance screen time. So we do have those in our lessons. Great question. Great. Thank you for um, pointing that question out. All right. So once again, I just want to thank you all for joining us. Um, we do welcome your feedback. We are going to, in the chat, share a feedback form with you. We love to hear how we can continue to improve these sessions and what you're looking for in the future. So um, we will drop the link to that feedback form in the chat, but it will also pop up um, when the webinar ends. So please make sure that you give us our, your feedback. We really welcome that. We rely on that to ensure that we are really um, catering these sessions to your needs and um, giving you the best sessions that we possibly can. So thank you again, everybody, for joining us today. Julia, thank you again for sharing your expertise. Um, and we're so excited for you to create those digital leaders in your classroom. Thank you everybody for joining us and we hope to see you soon here at thanks everyone happy digital citizenship week too Yay. <laughs> bye everybody thank you ashley thank you sarah thanks darlene thank you olivia thank you kimberly